Hello and welcome to this video on how to specify a piecewise linear growth curve model in the M Plus software. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. On Tuesdays I usually present an analysis in the M Plus software and on Thursdays I address more general issues in multivariate statistical analysis including factor analysis, structural equation modeling, multi-level analysis and latent class modeling. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to check out the description for additional free resources including a link to my weekly statistics newsletter as well as free courses that I offer through Quantfish. In this video I want to show you how to specify a piecewise linear growth curve model in the M plus software and I'm going to walk you through the output for such a model here as well. What do we use piecewise growth curve models for? Piecewise growth curve models can be used to address non-linear trajectories when we have for example initially a steeper decline in growth curves or a steeper increase and then later on a flatter uh, increase or decrease resulting in non-linearity in the overall trajectory and that can happen for example when during your study an event takes place so let's say in the middle of your study you have an intervention or treatment that addresses um, an outcome variable such as depression, anxiety or cognitive functioning and you expect that there will be an effect of that treatment post um, post the treatment you will have you'll expect there to be different trajectories different steepness of trajectories after you implement something or let's say there's an event in the middle an outbreak of a war an earthquake or something like that something happening that changes um, people's trajectories with regard to your outcome variable so for example here in my example I'm going to assume that we are looking at memory scores in um, older people and that they show a decline in memory performance initially and that then a treatment gets implemented somewhere in the middle of the study that is supposed to um, help them slow down the decline of their memory functioning and so we want to see then with a growth curve model if there is an effect of that uh, treatment so in this uh, hypothetical study here I'm assuming that uh, it's an intervention study targeted at helping memory performance that there are six time points and that after time point three we implement an intervention like let's say for example medication to help cognitive functioning or a memory training or something like that it's all hypothetical for this demonstration so we have six time points here which is why in the names statement I listed Y1 through Y6 so those are the, the repeatedly measured memory scores and again so say after Y3 after time point 3 we implement an intervention and then we assume that the last uh, the trajectory for the last three time points Y4, Y5, Y6 will differ from the initial trajectory and so specifically we would assume that initially there's a steeper decline in memory performance before individuals receive the treatment and then after they receive the treatment there should be a slower decline or no decline anymore in memory functioning and so this can be modeled with a piecewise growth model here specifically a piecewise linear growth curve model so we're still assuming that the pieces pre-intervention and post-intervention are both linear but they can be different in their steepness of the linear trajectories so overall it's then a non-linear or potentially non-linear trajectory that can be reflected so to say a flattening out of the curves over time how does this work in M plus it works by specifying two different commands for specifying intercept and slope factors so the first command here addresses the first piece of the trajectory for time one time two and time three pre-intervention and you can see that here we have an intercept factor and we have a slope one factor and the loadings on the slope one factor are specified here um, after the vertical bar symbol in M plus so Y1 at 0 means the slope factor does not have an impact on the first variable because no change has taken place yet at the first time point but then it has an 
um, an effect of one on time point two, an effect of two on time point three, and again two for the remaining three time points because there's no additional effect, so to say, above and beyond the initial linear trajectory because then the second slope factor will take over for those last three time points that come post the intervention. Remember that here the idea is that the intervention takes place after time point three, before time point four, so that we have a first piece of the trajectory that differs from the second piece here. And so the first slope factor, slope one, models only the trajectories up to time point three. And that those can be steeper um, from the remaining three time points. I should also mention here that the assumption in this case is that the time points are equally spaced. Otherwise, you would have to set the loadings differently here. And then you can see that there is a second slope factor in the second line of code in the model statement here where we specify slope 2 and slope 2 does not at all impact the first three time points because that's so say the job of the first slope factor to account for changes from time 1 to time 3 so those loadings are all zero here for the slope factor where this factor comes into play is after the intervention. So with this factor, we're modeling the second piece of the trajectory after the intervention has taken place. And so then, then this factor begins to have an impact on Y4, Y5, and Y6. And again, the loadings are fixed to 1, 2, and 3, reflecting linear growth for the second um, period after the intervention. And so the trick here, so to say, is that both slope one and slope two, they each have a mean and variance that is estimated independently. And so the mean and the variance of slope one can differ from the mean and variance of slope two, which means the trajectories can differ pre and post the intervention. And we'll see that in the output file when we look at the results here as well. <clears throat> we can take a look at descriptive statistics with a samstat command. We can look at the standardized solution and we can look at a plot in which the trajectories can be plotted. In this case, there were 438 observations. And when we scroll down a little bit more, we see the descriptive statistics and specifically here the means are interesting because they show us that initially the decline in memory functioning here was pretty severe from initially 50 points on average um, to 45 points on the second time point to 40 points on the third time point. So there was very substantial memory loss here in my example. And then you can see after the intervention took place between time three and time four, we have less of a decline. So here, for example, the decline is only about one point between time three and time four on average. So from 40 to 39 and then um, to 38 to 37. So the curve flattened out at least on average. And so this you couldn't really model very well with a single slope factor and a single linear growth factor because there's a difference in the trajectories very obviously for the first three time points versus the last three time points. Scrolling down further, we can take a look at fit statistics and you can see that the piecewise growth model here fit very well. If you fit a pure linear growth curve model with a single linear slope factor to these data, it wouldn't fit at all. So the fit would be really bad for these data. Looking at the model results, we can see the unstandardized parameter estimates in M plus. And so first of all, we can check that the loadings are set in a way that is um, appropriate. And so you can see the intercept factor has all loadings of one as usual for an intercept factor in a growth model. All the loadings are fixed to one, making this the initial um, status factor. The slope one factor has loadings zero, one, two for the first three time points as it should be. And then the loadings remain at two for the last time points because then the second slope factor takes over. And you can see that here um, 
for slope two, you can see the first three loadings are fixed to zero as it should be. And then the last three loadings are fixed to one, two and three, according to a linear pattern for the post intervention phase. We also get the covariances between intercept and slope factors, which here in this example are all non-significant. You can see that from the p-values here at, in the last column. And in the standardized solution, you could look at the correlations between these factors. Um, here the covariances are unstandardized measures of association, so they're not that easy to interpret. Of interest are the means of the growth factors and you can see that the intercept factor um, ha is intercept factor mean is about 50 which corresponds to our observed uh, descriptive statistic mean for y1 about it's about the same as what we saw for y1 as the mean and so this shows you that people started out with an average memory score of about 50 at time one and initially they lost about five points on average for every um, interval so for every unit of time for example between time one and time two they lost about five points and then again they lost another five points between time two and time three and that's what we already saw here from the average scores of the observed variable. So here is about a five point difference and then again there's an about five point difference here between time two and time three as well. So that's reflected now in the first slope factor mean being about five or negative five. So that's what that means and you can see that's a significant decline statistically. The mean is significantly different from zero um, showing that there was a significant decline on average in memory performance pre-intervention. Now the next slope factor mean is only negative one and that reflects that the mean scores declined less after time point three. Again, we can see this from the observed means. When we go back up, you can see here this was only a difference by about one point between time three and time four, so from 40 to 39, so the intervention apparently worked immediately. And then um, again, about one point from time four to time five, from 39 to about 38, and from time five to time six, about one point from 38 to 37. So that's why the second slope factor has a mean of about negative one. So there was a slowdown in the loss of memory functioning. In this study, again, you can see the decline is still significant. So this p-value is also very small, indicating that people, uh, people's memory loss continued. So there was still a significant loss, but not as much, so to say, as initially. Now, of course, this isn't a very strong experimental design here because we have no control or placebo group. So this could be purely a placebo effect, so to say, or the effect could be due to something else, some other event that happened to coincide with time three and time four, we don't know. So in order to really study an intervention effect, <coughs> excuse me, appropriately, we would have to have a placebo or control condition in addition to the experimental condition. So this is purely so see, a time series study with only a treatment group and no control group. So it's not the strongest experimental design, but you could have something like that. You could also include a, <coughs> excuse me, treatment condition variable. If you had two groups, you could regress the intercept and slope factors on your treatment variable and then see if there are any differences in those slope factors uh, in the trajectories, depending on whether you're in the placebo or treatment condition. We also get the variance estimates for the intercept and slope factors, quantifying inter-individual differences in the initial memory score and in the changes across time. And we get the residual variances as well as a standardized solution in which we can look at the factor correlations here. Um, those are in this case non-significant, but they may be in other applications, they may be significant and they allow you to look at whether for example, the initial status is related to the change across time. So you can look at that as well. And in M plus, you can also take a look at the plot of the growth curves by going to plot and then view plots. And so here you can first of all, take a look at the average growth curve that is implied 
by this model by clicking on estimated means and then view. And so here you can see that this model clearly so they can address this type of trajectory where initially there is a stronger decline and then later on there is less of a decline and so that is well reflected in the parameters of this model. We can also look at individual growth curves by going back to plot and then view plots and we can look at the observed individual values for example 10 curves in consecutive order so those would be the first 10 growth curves that were observed in this data set and we can click through the data set by um, going to this icon here get next sample the icon with the arrow clicking on that you can click through the entire data set and you can see not so well but you can see a little bit also this tendency for there to be initially a stronger decline than later on it's harder to see from the observed curves because there's also measurement error and so measurement error makes these curves more messy it adds noise so that it's harder to see what the actual pattern is it's easier to see from the model implied curves which you can also look at by clicking on plot and then view plots estimated individual values so here you can see measurement error so it has been smoothed out now because those are the latent curves where measurement error has been separated out and here you can see clearly this um, pattern for most individuals where they have a steeper decline first and then less of a decline you can click again through the entire data set and it's a pretty homogeneous thing because this model fits these data well here so you can see that that's how this can be modeled. So this is a useful methodology when you have um, a time series where in the middle something happens and you believe that the trajectories are not uniform across time, not uniformly linear, but that there are different pieces to the linear trajectories, then you can use a piecewise linear growth curve model. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about growth curve models. If you did, then please hit the like button. Also, don't forget to check out the description for additional resources, including courses that uh, are offered through Quantfish on growth curve models and longitudinal structural equation modeling with M+. And I'll see you next time.